Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on fronosphoto.com, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, I'm gonna send you that guide for free. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com, and this is a review of the Laowa 10 millimeter f2.8 full frame autofocus lens. Now this lens is available in autofocus for Nikon Z mount as well as Sony's E mount, but they do make a manual version for the N mount lens, 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 as well as Canon RF. So maybe one day they will bring autofocus to all of the mounts. Now, before I get into what I shot, this is the first autofocus lens that Laowa has made. Now, you may remember that they've made those periscopic lenses. They've also made a microscopic lens, and they are doing a lot more in the industry by going with an autofocus lens. Now, I like to consider them something like a fourth party type of lens, whereas Sigma and Tamron I consider to be more of a third party lens. There's a lot of new lenses coming out of China that are less expensive and more budget friendly, but does that mean that the quality isn't up to snuff in comparison to a first party or a third party type of lens? And that's what I'll help you figure out in this review. So what did I photograph? Well, I took it around Philly. I photographed a handyman out on the street, one of the cool light bulbs that I happened upon in Fishtown. I took it to La Colombe, which is a big coffee shop here to try to get some cool shots. I went to a bakery because I love cupcakes. I really just went to buy cupcakes and I ended up taking some pictures. Took it to the bowling alley to shoot some photos as well as video. And of course, why not go to the Citizens Bank ballpark where the Philadelphia Phillies play to get an ultra wide angle shot at 10 millimeters up in the stands. But now let's get into the outside of the lens. Look at this bad boy. It's blue. It it's it's actually a really nice metallic looking blue lens. Now, when you put it up on your Nikon camera, which I ended up using Nikon, I didn't have the Sony version, this is what they sent me, it doesn't exactly match your camera. But they wanted to stand out a little bit, that's perfectly fine. I don't hate the fact that it doesn't match, it's not a big deal in my book. But the lens feels perfectly fine in the hands. The metal, ooh, oh yeah, listen to that. That's right, the metal feels pretty good in the hands. It doesn't feel like a cheap plastic young new from the past where they had those 50 millimeter 1.8s that definitely felt really terrible. This doesn't feel terrible. It feels nice in the hands. Now it weighs in at under a pound at 15 ounces or 420 grams and really only has one switch on the side. You've got your autofocus to manual switch. That's it. And you've got your manual ring right here to manually focus your lens if you wanna go ahead and do that. And that is nice and smooth. It has a built-in lens hood, which isn't really that big of a deal, especially for a lens that is this wide. The lens hood is gonna be super small, but something that I didn't like at all that I have to point out to you is the lens cap. You know, I love the clamshell style lens caps or whatever they call them, but you can barely get your fingers in here to pinch. You gotta be like a rock climber to pinch this. It's like a crimp or something. This is, hey, Lala, this is something you guys need to do better on. If, and if this is the biggest issue with the lens, that's not that big of a deal. You can correct this. Um, but yeah, you gotta make this a much better lens cap for pinching because it just falls right out of your fingers. Anyway, like, oh, I caught it. I'm so good. I've got a great glove hand. Um, it's a 77 millimeter lens cap for when you drop it and lose it when you're at the top of some building and it pops out of your fingers because it's a terrible lens cap. But that means you have a 77 millimeter filter thread as well. In case you wanna add some filters, you can go ahead and do that. Now I should tell you that lens correction is automatically on, at least it was with the Nikon Z9 that I used. I can't turn it off. I can't do anything else other than have it be a corrected 10 millimeter 
image. So is there a reason why you would want it uncorrected? I don't know, just to see what it looks like Boeing, but everything today is being digitally corrected and you'll see in the images what they look like when we get to that point. In terms of aperture blades, you've got five of them and that's gonna help when you stop down to give you this 10 point sun stars. If you wanna get those points that are happening, you can do that with this because it has the five aperture blades. Big deal that it doesn't have nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. No, not really, not, not a big deal at all. But let's jump into some of these images. 10 millimeters is wide. You can use this for video and we'll show you some video right now of me bowling being an amazing bowler. That's just cut together from some 10 millimeter video. Uh, is it good? It's all right. It's not bad, it's a unique look, but of course you can create with anything. I think most people are gonna end up using this lens for taking photos. And one of the things I did is I photographed this handyman, his name's Steve. Hey Steve, how are you? Ah, uh, I don't know, I'm Steve, I, uh, I'm a handyman. He looks fine, but you have to get really close with a 10 millimeter. If you stay too far away, nothing is gonna look like anything. It's just gonna be a snapshot. So you just have to work your way in closer. Now, as I walk through Fishtown, there's this place called Hefe Taco. You might remember it from the review that I did of the Fuji X100 6, because this is the same light. I got up on a chair, I got super close with the lens, and look, you can be creative with this. Do you think that you can blow the background out and out of focus with a 10 millimeter at 2.8? The answer is yeah, you absolutely can. And this is what it looks like. It looks pretty good. I'm happy with a creative shot like this. Let me jump in here real quick because I wanna show you our custom Lightroom presets from FroPak 4 in action on this photo right here, starting with Blue's Clues, followed by Brooklyn, C41, Copper Tone, High C, Kaleidoscope, Saltwater Taffy, thick and wet hot American summer. But my all time favorite preset from FroPak One with one click is Skittles and it goes boom. But check this out, exclusive to FroPak Four are four custom adaptive Lightroom presets called X1, X2, X3, and X4. Let's check out Face Enhance called X1. With one click, it creates all of these masks for you that you don't have to do anything. So let's click on facial skin. We could raise the amount or lower the amount. So you can see before and after, and you can make it work any way you want. So look, if you wanna speed up your raw workflow, give yourself a great starting point, or you're just tired of people's presets sucking, ours don't suck. We created 14 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at chronosphoto.com slash fropack4. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or if you want to get the Grand Slam bundle that is FroPak 1, 2, 3, and 4, you can save even more. Now, let's get back to the video. But as I continued over to La Cologne, which is a big coffee shop here, um, I wanted to get some movement. And this is a quick teachable moment. If you're just gonna take a snapshot down low of people standing in line, it's gonna look like a bunch of people standing in line. Now, if they're at the coffee shop and the line is moving, and you convey that with a slower shutter speed, then you have an image instead of a snapshot. Now I shot this one at 0.8 seconds at f2.8 at 64 ISO because the Z9 lets you go all the way down to 64. I could have absolutely sped that up to give me a faster shutter speed, but the whole point is I wanted to get that movement. And no, there's no image stabilize built in, but it's not that hard to stabilize it when the stabilizers are built into the bodies these days. I love the way that this image looks. It gives you that nice wide look straight on both doors open people coming out and people inside that's what you can do with something that is 10 millimeters now there's a lot of things to do in fishtown especially if you're going to drink some coffee you might want to get a cupcake so i went over to ramona susan's which is uh her name is not actually ramona that works there but her name's betty and betty makes these amazing cupcakes look how close i was able to get to this cupcake that she's holding outside of the window yeah that close and it was able to focus on that cupcake. It's not really meant to be a macro lens because you don't want to get that close to things, but I was able to do it. The next image I chose to focus on Betty and not the cupcake. And here's the difference when you look at them side by side. In focus cupcake, in focus Betty. That's what you're able to do. 
you gotta be pretty creative with a 10 millimeter because it does have some very limiting uses. But when you go into the bakery and Betty is there working, find yourself a great corner to get a really nice angle to showcase the entire scene. Now, some people might say this is a good lens for architecture or for uh, real estate photos. I don't really agree that it's great for real estate because it's misleading for showing the size of rooms. Now that may work for pics, but it doesn't work when you're doing architecture and people are gonna find out. I guess they're gonna find out either way that you're lying if something doesn't match up in the end. Anyway, I really like this environment environmental portrait of Betty. But look here on the left-hand side at this refrigerator. Uh, you see how much it's bowed? Not bowed, but stretched out at the edges? That's what happens with the digital correction. But now let's move out to the Philadelphia Museum of Art, AKA where Rocky ran up the stairs. And for this, I wanted to have a subject in the foreground. This is my buddy, Dan, beautiful sweater, Dan, very nice job. But when we zoom in on him, I'm surprised how sharp his face is. It looks really good. It is spot on and the, and the background looks fine. Now around the edges of the frame, there is a strong vignette at 2.8. You could correct for that later on. And as you get more to the edges, the lines are nice and straight from the digital correction. But you know, is it super sharp on the edges through and through? The answer is no. Is that that big of a deal to me? The answer is no, not really. Uh, and I wanted to see how close I could get to Dan. So I had him lean in and it's basically like this lens was touching his nose. That's how close you can get to your subject to get something like this. You may not be using this unless you're making a rap video from the 90s that isn't, you know, it, it's not a fisheye and you wanna go the other way around. You could use it for something like that, but a place that I think you're gonna use it more often is at a stadium, like where the Phillies play. You go up into the stands, you get a 10 millimeter shot. You're gonna show everything from the left and everything from the right. You're gonna capture the entire stadium and skyline out there in a distance. That is where I see a lens like this being used or in one of those pregame huddles where my buddy who shoots a lot of soccer, he wants to use a lens like this because he can't get wide enough on the Nikon because the closest lens that they have is a 14 millimeter at the widest. So how much is this lens? This is a $799 lens that serves not a huge purpose, but there's nothing that matches it, at least for, for, for the Nikon and at least for the Sony right now in terms of autofocus. Canon has a lens that's the 10 to 20 millimeter F4. That's $2,300. Is it a great lens? Yeah. It's a great lens for $2,300, and this thing is 799 bucks. So before I tell you who it's for, we gotta do two things, the sniff test and the wind tunnel test. Let's sniff it. Yo, Adrian! Yeah, it smells like Rocky Balboa's gloves. It's better than smelling his shorts, but mmm, Rocky Balboa glove smell. All right, let's blow it right now. All right, pass the wind tunnel test, it didn't move. You would think a fourth party lens would end up moving off the table. So who's this lens for? Very limited amount of people. Is it expensive at 800 bucks? I mean, it's, I think it's expensive because it's a limiting lens. But if you have a need to get up close and personal, but still get a wide shot, then this lens might be the right choice for you. My buddy Greg wants to use this out at the soccer games because it's gonna give him that shot inside of the huddle. That's what he wants and a wide shot of the stadium. So if that fits your need, I don't see a reason why I wouldn't recommend this lens for 800 bucks because there's really nothing else that matches it on the brands that I just talked about. What do you guys think? Leave me some comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Jared, polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.